crane shown here is supporting 120,000 pounds of its own weight, 30,000 pounds of the weight of the boom, and 16,000 pounds over at the load itself. We want to know what the ground is supporting at A and B. So we're asked to find the reactions here at the two treads, neglecting the thickness of the treads. That means that each of those forces will be in the vertical. The ground is going to have to support this crane from falling through the center of the earth. So you've got AY and BY here at the treads, acting generally where they tell you the measurements are. So we're going to assume that, that those measurements were given to us so that we could use them. We've got AY and BY acting at those points. You've also got on your free body diagram the weight of the crane itself, 120,000 pounds, the weight of the boom, 30,000 pounds, and the weight of the load at 16,000 pounds. Now we have a couple more distances we have to add. This is going to be 12 feet along the edge of the boom here, and this is 15 feet up to the top, and that the angle of the boom is 30 degrees. That's our free body diagram. The tension in the cable is not included because it's internal. Whatever's happening in the tension of this cable is happening to the crane itself on both sides. So that's not included. When we start doing equilibrium equations, you've got for any two-dimensional object, rigid body like this, the sum of the forces in the x, the sum of the forces in the y, and the sum of the moments that we're going to have to be able to calculate. All the forces, forces being in the vertical, the sum of the forces in x is equal to zero because there aren't any. So I've got zero equals zero, which is nice but not particularly helpful. The sum of the forces in y tells me that ay plus by, those are both going up, minus 120,000 pounds, minus 30,000 pounds, minus 16,000 pounds, those are all in pounds, has to be equal to zero. Or I can simplify that to ay plus by equals 166,000 pounds. Now I have one equation in two unknowns. I'm going to need to actually calculate the sum of the moments. The sum of the moments to do that, I have to figure out where I'm going to take the sum of the moments about. I could do A, I could do B, I could do the basic part of the end of the boom. That would be a most sensible place to go because all of my measurements are there. So I'm going to take the sum of the moments at that point C. A, Y. If I put my pencil here at C, at the base of the boom, what I want to ask myself is about each of these forces, will it spin this crane at point C? Does A, Y create a moment at C? Clearly, if you thought about some sort of pin going through the paper at C, pushing over here at A would turn this crane. So A is going to have a moment. It's at a perpendicular distance from its line of action of 10 feet. It would tend to turn the crane clockwise. The weight of the crane this itself is 120,000 pounds, would tend to turn the whole crane counterclockwise, and that acts at a distance of 6 feet away. Because these are in opposite directions, this one is clockwise and this one is counterclockwise, I need to have different signs for the sum of the moments. Remember, the sum of the moments is actually out of the plane of the paper. So it's not whether I'm taking this, the positive or negative x and y components. I just want to know whether they are into or out of the page, the moment created there. B will create a moment at C. Its perpendicular distance is 3. It goes clockwise, so I'm going to make this match. Uh, counterclockwise. I'm going to make it match the sign for the weight of the whole crane. The 30,000 pound load acts at a distance, a perpendicular distance now, so I can't use the 12 feet. I have to use this triangle. It's 12 cosine 30. That's the perpendicular distance, perpendicular to the line of action of the force. So the 30,000 pound force is vertical. That means that the perpendicular distance is this horizontal piece right here. That tends to spin clockwise, so I'm going to make it positive. I have a 16,000 pound load that's the same. It's also going to be positive because it's clockwise. The difference is its length. It is now 12 plus 15 away for that same 30 degree uh, triangle. So this will be 27 cosine 30. That has to all sum up to be equal to zero. If you simplify this, we get 10ay minus 3by is 34107.88 foot-pounds. Remember, units of foot-pounds for your moments. And if I write down what I had before, I've got AY plus BY is 166,000. That's from the sum of the forces in the Y direction. Once you have these two equations in two unknowns, I can solve. So if I, for example, multiplied this bottom one by negative 10, 
I would have negative 10y minus 10by is minus 1,660,000 foot, foot pounds now. So I can add this equation and this equation. The ay's will cancel, and I get minus 13by is minus 1,62589, and by is 125,069. Those are yet once again in units of pounds. I can substitute that back in. Ay is 40,931.4 pounds. Answer the question to three sig figs, etc. Ay is 40.9 kips. Remember, a kip is a kilopound, and by is 125 kips.